It's been 30 minutes, and our wine. All right, so get a bunch like this. Get a little aeration going. But let's check this out. Let's go. You can see I'm using a Cabernet glass. I could have used a Bordeaux glass, but this works. I mean, it's not a Bordeaux. It's definitely full-bodied according to its reviews, but... Definitely some Melvin Podcast. Melvin Podcast. Podcast. Only it's very like very earthy, complex. Like I can it's like almost the forest, forest floor. It's like it's acidic, but it's not too acidic. Quite lively. Yeah, you're um you're initially hit with a lot of floral notes. A little yeah. A little raspberry. It's almost to the cusp of having a little tartness to it, but not quite there. Oh. Ouch. Let's take a look at the spotlight over here. Uh, so we've got three different types of taste. We've got sour, we've got salty, and we've got water. Um, so... <laughs> So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a taste of the water first. That's what water tastes like. See this lemon. That's what lemon tastes like. I am. You take a little bit of salt. That's what salt tastes like. So now that you've tasted salt, sour, and water, your mouth will be fully calibrated to drink the wine. Cheers. So this is Fabio Gia's bottle of wine here. This is Palma 2017. It is a Barbera uh, di Alba, um, Superiore. So... This is a really interesting bottle. As you can see, we have this little nice tag here that says, red wine produce of Italy, produce of Italy, 750 ml, alcohol 15, contains sulfites, and it is imported by Louis Jusner. Selections, New York. And you know what? I love Louis Jusner. A lot of good wines come out from from that one uh, manufacturer, um, or importer, sorry. And, you know, you can trust a wine by their importer sometimes, and I think that's really true about Louis Dressner, because, like, they pump out some really cool bottles, and some interesting ones, too. I mean, this bottle right here, it, there's another bottle, um, a higher end, that has uh, no label right here, no white label. It's just all gone, and... It's just, it comes with this bottle. And if you kind of look up here on the bottle, yeah, yeah, look at that bottle. There's uh, some sort of like cloth under it, right there, and then wax on top. So that's gonna be, all right. So as you can see, we have, we have, sorry, I'm gonna bring this closer to me. Ah. This is why you get, microphones that you put on your shirt and not a microphone that sits on a stand but anyway just get yourself a nice decanter now i went over to horse neck wines and i purchased this wine um uh, greg helped me out with this selection and i'm really thankful for greg he's always been uh giving me great wine suggestions that man has has a talent and he knows his wine so I highly suggest you go down to Horseneck Wine and Spirits, pick up a bottle, talk to the guys, they know what they're talking about. All right, so, boom. The goal of this is to put the bottle into this. So let's go. Woo. Let's move this decanter over. Stuff. 
Whoop. Hey, okay, and we're back. Okay. All right, so sweet. We have this guy right here. Um, now, I don't want to break it. Like, this bottle looks so clean as it is right now. I took, like, pictures, so we're good. We have pictures of the bottle before, but it feels like I'm breaking a masterpiece. But here it goes. That was sick. Wait. And then you, like, unravel it? No, it just comes off. All right. Oh, wait. No, look. The, the cloth actually came off. So, like... Oh. All right. So, then you get the cloth off, I guess. That's interesting. That's a new uh, step to the process. And then this this thing comes off pretty easily. I mean, it is annoying because it's like wax. Wax bottles are always annoying. You can never get out of a wax bio bottle annoyance. Like the uh, Saint Emilion, um, that wax bottle. The uh, what else is wax? Uh, the Dairy Man. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at the bottle. It's about to be opened. This is my favorite part. So as you can see, pointy part right here goes into the cork. And it goes in and then up. So you go up and then in, up, and then twist. And we should be good. This is probably going to be a really... Clean. Pull of the cork. Gin gin. It, it, it really smells like, so this is a thing. Another thing is sometimes people smell the caps um, when they open the bottle. Um, you can actually, by analyzing a cap, you can see um, how, like if the cap is gross and if it's like all like messed up and jagged, then you know that there was a problem with the cap and like there may have gotten some more oxygen than you didn't need. But like this cap right here looks amazing. And I just learned a little bit about cork recently. It's actually uh, very interesting how they make these things. They, it's like a tree. You like take the bark off a tree. All right. There we go. So now, here comes the pour. And don't spill on my computer. So this is gonna have to stay in the bottle for around 30 minutes. So we can let the oxygen really bring out the complexity, flavor, and aroma in the wine. Perfecto. We're going to go with a 3.95. 3.95. That is what it is. 3.95. There we go. And with that, I would like to conclude my message. Chin chin or cheers. Cheers.